Good afternoon. Uh, welcome back for those who've joined us before for this LPA 10 year, 10 minute uh, web interview. Uh, we are now at our seventh edition and uh, we have our most international and uh, tech savvy uh, speaker yet in the person of Nazir Zubairi. Hi, Nazir. Hi, Raja. How are you? Good, good. Long time no see, relatively, but um, very pleased to have you with us to talk about fintech and much more than that related to tech uh, as our uh, CEO of Loft, Luxembourg House of Fintech, for those who don't know. You've been in Luxembourg for four years after a whirlwind trip around the world, it seems, Nazir. 25 years in financial services, in capital markets as an entrepreneur. Uh, you've been living across different continents from, uh, and countries from Tokyo to Berlin, but yeah, Singapore. Uh, and, but you grew up in London, of all places. And uh, today, I think you got, we're going to try to cram in a lot because there's so much to ask you about your experience as, at Loft. Loft being, if, uh, and you can correct me, a foundation that's public uh, but, and that caters uh, to startups related to the fintech world digitalization. Uh, is that correct, Nazir? And you've had this job for how long? Uh, I've been doing this since uh, December 2017. Um, so the foundation was officially incorporated in April mm -hmm. 20, oh sorry, December 6, 2016. And we officially incorporated the foundation in March um, 2017. But it's a public private foundation. I think that's key and that's one of the most important factors I think in Luxembourg that I, I think is unique and special about it is the public sector working hand in hand with the private sector. That's true, we'll come back to that, Nazir. Uh, last thing to say about you, having grown up in London, you are half Polish and, uh, and you are enjoying confinement from what I understand, because I've been browsing through your Twitter account and came across this uh, picture, which uh, I think everybody who's listening to us should have a look at. Uh, can you please comment on this? So you're, you're, you're breaking the rules and having parties during confinement. Uh, you know it's all me. Um, it's just about finding ways to occupy units of time. So cooking, a bit of art, a bit of play with the uh, video camera and, and, and some digital tools. You, you um, prove you're tech savvy with this one, but you like uh, baseball caps or things like that, right? I had a bad hair day yesterday. So this is from yesterday, great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, welcome, Nazia. So as you know, this format means we spend 10 minutes, uh, just you and I, with three questions, and then we open to, to the audience uh, who can ask you questions live. And of course, if you don't mind, people should be able to contact you separately, directly, uh, to talk about uh, topics uh, that are relevant to, to your world. So everybody knows of Loft one way or another, at least for those who are in Luxembourg, but tell us of all the initiatives that you hold uh, regularly as part of your mandate, please. Yeah, yeah sure. I mean, uh, first thing though, I would say, I mean, a lot of people say Loft stands for Luxembourg House of FinTech. Uh, I have to admit it makes me wince because uh, I hate the word FinTech. It creates a barrier between the traditional world and and these uh, technology companies. Um, it's all financial services. So the, the FT uh, at the end stands for financial technology because I don't like to create those lines of distinction. It is all financial services ultimately. Um, in terms of the things we do, we look at what our work is, is around um, ensuring the future competitiveness of Luxembourg's financial services sector with a key focus on digitalization, transformation and uh, financial technology startups. And what we do really broadly around that strategically is focus on ecosystem development. Um, we focus on knowledge development. And obviously we also do a few things where around projects and various initiatives to help drive the, the broad sector forward. In terms of the regular things we do, obviously I think most people know of our FinTech Fridays. If you don't, you really should. Um, great fun event uh, once a month. Um, we run a variety of boot camps and programs. Um, Catapult, um, Catapult Kick, uh, Financial Inclusion has been, now been running for three years, which is a program aimed at um, firms focused on developing financial inclusion technologies for the um, African markets. Um, we were hoping to launch a new program with the Ministry of Economy in June, which was called Catapult Kickstarter for very early stage businesses. 
um, which involves a level of funding and education over a period of two weeks, but obviously COVID-19 has got in the way, so we're having to postpone that. Um, but I mean, there's a whole variety of things. We try to run at least one or two uh, workshops on a uh, weekly basis. Uh, now we've obviously switched to webinars, uh, which have been quite popular and well attended. We have formed a variety of partnerships with the universities and various education providers to help build a variety of programs. Um, so yeah, we, we, we keep busy and, and obviously we get involved in a lot of events on the side um, in the broader ecosystem as well. Wow, that, that's a lot, Nazir. Maybe in the Q&A part you tell us how we can engage uh, within this, sure. uh, all these initiatives. But my second question, since you uh, pronounced already the word, the C word, C19. So everybody's trying to speculate uh, about the future of financial services with the digitalization and that's being accelerated by, by this crisis. W which segments do you think will, tr will thrive and why and how? Uh, because we always try to put a positive spin to our interviews. Sure. Um, I actually think it will just be an extension of what was becoming very prominent, particularly in Luxembourg anyway, which is this whole sector known as RegTech. Um, the banks uh, uh, have been in trouble for a long time, uh, large financial institutions. Uh, their return on equity is generally dismal across Europe, uh, averaging around 6%, coming down from a high of sort of, sort of 15 to 18% pre-financial crisis 2009. Um, many of the larger institutions, particularly, unfortunately, in Italy, the Italian banks, have got diabolically poor non-performing loan portfolios, which are only going to um, get worse post this crisis. Um, and the banks are in trouble. And, and what they're really looking at now is how can we accelerate our cost savings into the future with a focus on compliance technologies, anything to do with um, reporting more efficiently, monitoring more efficiently, managing data more efficiently. Um, I think these will just continue. I think specifically with COVID-19, we're seeing greater inf um, um, emphasis on technologies which have been brought to the fore because of the current situation. No financial institution can onboard new customers particularly effectively because they can't meet anyone and it still relies very much on faxes, pieces of papers and signatures. So technologies around uh, digital signatures, um, video onboarding, um, customer interaction that can allow for the regulatory requirements and KYC process to be effectively done remotely, I think will uh, really front and center of most institutional minds. Mm -hmm. but, but that you said a lot of uh, key words because we hear a lot the word reg tech and KYC onboarding. Yeah, are these segments that in Luxembourg are well looked after by the startups and, and, and tell us about your startups and how maybe LPA as a, you know, we, we have members that are venture capital firms and family offices that are investors and obviously fintech is a big topic. Is this part of your remit, what you just described uh, in the loft? Absolutely. I mean, we've put a huge emphasis on regtech since day one as a strategic goal for developing that sector in Luxembourg, given the needs of the institutional side. Um, I mean, broadly speaking, if you look at the different categories of firms that seem to set up and operate and do well in Luxembourg, RegTech has now become the biggest segment alongside payments firms. Um, and that was starting from a base of near zero about four years ago. There is a big demand for that. I mean, given the nature of the business in Luxembourg across the institutional side, which is a lot of administrative work, a lot of compliance, a lot of reporting, um, it makes sense. So those, those firms have thrived here. They find very easy access to their customer base. The sales cycle tends to typically be shorter in Luxembourg. And I mean, what's fantastic about Luxembourg is it's just a great place to be in the center of Europe, dealing with service providers and support providers that can handle the entire European ecosystem as well as a global ecosystem. So they can use Luxembourg as a base to basically expand and grow their business across the entire continent and not just stick to this center in itself. So it's, it's been thriving and a lot of the firms there are doing very, very well. So, so what are you most proud of within, you know, in these four years that in terms of achievement? Um, aside from the wonderful team that yeah, has I was, come I was together say, to, to run the loft. Um, we, we know your team and we love them. Wonderful people. 
Yeah, so. I mean, the, the team is fantastic and I'm, I'm, I'm just proud that they have achieved all that they have achieved and they get the respect of, of everyone else as well, I, I believe, in, in Luxembourg who they work with. I think what I'm most proud of is this, the, the speed at which things have transpired and changed over the past three or four years. I would say I, I was a little frustrated when I first came here. I didn't come to Luxembourg to, to build a loft. I came here to do, uh, build a bank, actually. Um, but engaging with the financial community here, I, felt, I saw a lot of excuses as to why they're not digitalizing. And many of those excuses now have been broken down and we see active engagement from those institutional side in terms of wanting to develop and, and a belief that they could be market leaders as opposed to just being resigned to being support to their headquarters, wherever those headquarters can be. They want to take on the challenge, they want to be dominant, they want to be um, in, a, in a leading position when it comes to digital and working with a lot of these startups is, is a key strategic element of that. So the development of the ecosystem has been phenomenal and the way it's come together from pretty much a zero base, you know, four years ago. So, so you said it's a public-private partnership and that's yes. the first Q&A question. So we are a kind of a private organization, but we support also the authorities. What can we do more together, Nazir, with Loft? And I know we've had a few common initiatives yeah. uh, as, as per my earlier question. Well, the private equity and specifically venture capital goes hand in hand with uh, fintech or financial technology and the startups that we support in our incubator. Um, finding capital is not the easiest thing. Um, what we're looking for really is to shine more of a spotlight into the great businesses um, that are being built in Luxembourg to enable them to effectively grow. Um, I'm a very blunt chap. I think most of you, you know this. I don't mess anyone around. I don't mess the startups around. If they're not ready to, to raise money or they're not fit to raise money, we have a good conversation and I don't introduce them to anyone. But we do have now, uh, and quite rightly so, a, a large number of strong startups that I believe should be um, attracting private capital. Yet it's difficult and we're constantly going outside of Luxembourg. Luckily, we have a broad enough network to bring that capital in. And I'd just like to see more activity and engagement from the local community. And I think that's a way that uh, we can work together. But also to the interesting opportunity, I think, of, of attracting more venture capitalists to Luxembourg as a whole, which is in both of our interests, I think. I think we should think of a big joint event, uh, which I know we discussed in principle in the past, and uh, hopefully this crisis will give us the opportunity to think of it uh, in a grander scheme later. Uh, so it, it seems impressive, and I think for all the people listening to us who don't know Luxembourg, and that's my other question that I have from the Q&A, you surely have a lot of competition from other European centers. How does Luxembourg differentiate itself as a fintech hub? Well, I think this is also an interesting strategic framing that we've taken from the beginning is we don't see it as a competition. We're not out there to be the number one center in the world. Um, we're not out there to be the biggest, the brightest um, of anything. We just want to make sure that we have an effective ecosystem. So in actuality, we collaborate very, very closely with all the other European hubs, apart from the UK, who do want to be number one at everything um, and choose not to collaborate with anyone else. Um, but we have a very effective and close relationship with all the other major European hubs. Uh, Alex Panikan and my team manages our role as part of an in initiative called the Talent Route. Um, where all the hubs come together to see how we can enhance the ecosystem collectively on a European level. And so there we do try and act as a, as, as a block, as a European entity, as opposed to uh, trying to uh, fight each other individually on, on a country by country basis. Mm -hmm. Great. So two more questions at least. Uh, next one would be case study. So I'm a fintech from another country and I see that Luxembourg has this great ecosystem to support me. What, what do I do? Are you the first port of call? And what happens once we come and see you? Um, I'd like to think we should be the first port of call. And in most cases we are. I mean, I think we know the ecosystem better than most. Um, obviously, critically, we work very closely with Luxembourg for Finance with Nicola McKell and his team who act as the um, element of the promotional element internationally. So we often are brought together um, try uh, positioning Luxembourg as a, as a fintech center. Um, 
I mean, there's many case studies. What I find, you know, incredibly humbling is the fact that we can call on some of the, not just Luxembourg's, but the world's largest players to act as reference points for Luxembourg and the quality of its ecosystem and as a place to be as a fintech. We regularly have PayPal involved in calls where we're talking to um, all the large startups or large fintech firms across the world. Many, many of our members are very, very happy to act as a reference point. We'd like to think that they enjoy being here. I mean, it certainly seems so. They've all stayed in, in the most part. Um, and are happy to, to work with us to, to build that ecosystem even further. Um, so we always try and find people from the similar line of business to interact with and talk to anyone potentially considering Luxembourg as, as a place to be. That's, that's, that's amazing. So we'll take your word on this. Examples of large uh, companies present in Luxembourg, I'm getting asked as well, that are not from here, that are not startups anymore, but that you collaborate with one way or another? Sure. Uh, Amazon, Alipay. Alipay just moved into our offices today. So, um, oh, wow. When to, we do, all, to do what? Um, well, that, this is their European headquarters now. So um, they've taken a large office space within our facility. Um, we were, a number of the team were there today. Um, Dilek and Fred from my team were there with their face marks on, helped showing them around and uh, giving them the keys to their, to their new space. But they, they're coming here in quite sizable force. Um, PayPal, obviously, LendInvest from the UK, um, Blockchain.com. I mean, not many people know, but one of the largest blockchain companies in the world is, and with that URL they deserve to be, um, is based here in Luxembourg and is based at the loft. Um, there's many big examples of great tech companies or fintech companies mm -hmm. in Luxembourg and more and more seem to want to come here. Airbnb Amazing. payments as well. Yeah. Okay, well, so we're going to have to watch you and involve you more with our investor community. But you said another keyword, you said the C word, and now you said the B word, blockchain. That no. I, I, I got a question about, uh, does Luxembourg play a role in this? What is blockchain for you? And how is it going to develop further, especially post-crisis? Um, I, I mean, I, I've been honest with most people. I've never historically been a huge fan of blockchain. Um, I, I think for a large part, it's been a technology looking for a problem to solve. But I've come to the conclusion late last year that it's not going away and that we need to support it. And it's only a driving force for transformation in the industry. Um, myself and the team at the end of uh, 2019 were sitting over a glass of wine talking about our members. And we sort of said, what are the most exciting companies? What are the ones that are most likely to do well? And uh, the epiphany was that the, the top four that we came up with were all blockchain companies. And I would never have said that four years ago. Um, blockchain is driving change, particularly in the funds industry, particularly in the securities industry, um, driving more efficiency, driving uh, greater, uh, uh, driving lowering costs, and, and it has huge potential. And some of the companies we have, which are homegrown out of Luxembourg, um, I think most of you probably saw the announcement from Funds DLT just very recently as well, um, are really making change happen. The industry is changing. Um, and we've put a big focus this year in working with the traditional players to try and help them understand the potential disruption that may be coming to them if they don't start looking at changing their processes because somebody's going to do mm -hmm. it. But, but Nazir, you, you intrigued me now. You said you're not a huge fan of blockchain. What does that mean? So... I am the signatory to a number of patents for a system developed in the 90s called the EBS dealing system. The EBS dealing system was, and still I think arguably by volume today, the largest uh, interbank exchange across any capital market. It was for the foreign exchange spot market. We traded about $250 billion on a daily basis went through our system. That system was a distributed ledger technology. It's, um, if you look at the patents, you'll see, I mean, it's not blockchain in itself. Um, and it, it did provide a lot of efficiency. It provided high throughput. It was allowed, it was not blockchain specifically to allow for that reason. Um, blockchain has a number of issues. I mean, nobody has yet been able to argue with me why and for what blockchain is the optimal and best solution. Um, it is a solution, we can choose many technologies, but um, I don't see any particular problem where blockchain is necessarily the best technology. 
to mm -hmm. solve that problem. Um, okay. We should I, explore that. Yeah. Uh, so what's, what's your final word if we were to look ahead and beyond C19 and if we look at the bank of tomorrow, the payments of tomorrow, the financial services of tomorrow, do you see this uh, split between startups and incumbents continuing? Do you see them merging? What about regulation within all these schemes? Try to give a big picture before we wrap up. Uh, I mean, I, I've never seen it as, a, as I said, a them and us kind of situation. I think it's about collaboration. Um, the big institutions, some of them are being impacted. And I think over the next few years, we will see a number going bankrupt. Um, but they're not all suddenly going to be replaced by a bunch of new young technology companies. Because financial services has one very specific element, which is impossible to garner overnight, and that is trust customers trust the old institutions. So really, to me, it's about the collaboration on a B2B level where technology companies work with the big incumbents and everyone wins, one plus one equals three, um, which also includes obviously the customer. Yes, there will always be new entrants. There has historically in every industry been new entrants disrupting old entrants who are failing to change. And what we're trying to do is work with all sectors, including the traditional institutions, to help them understand that they do need to change. Otherwise, they do face the, the threat of disruption over time. It mm -hmm. might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but yep. I think COVID-19 and the situation we face at the moment is, is making a lot of people reflect that we're all sitting in our homes relying entirely on digital solutions um, to, to make our lives functions and our work, um, uh, uh, to, 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 to manage the operations of our workplace. And allow parties like the one you held on such day with yourself. Nazia, yeah. th this, is, this is wonderful. I know we, we can follow you very easily on, on the Twitter. I think your account is N-A-S uh, and then yes. Z-U-B, right? That's right, yeah. So a lot of, lot of great posts always. Uh, I want to also use this opportunity to thank the viewers for their loyalty because these uh, webinars have been doing well. And uh, because you mentioned solidarity and collaboration, uh, we are now launching a kind of a social initiative to support independent artists in Luxembourg and we're doing a first concert on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, which you can find on our website and Nazia I hope you I know you love music so I hope you join our first artist who's a piano soloist that will perform some great uh, pieces uh, at 6 p.m. on Wednesday and of course as we go for a drink as soon as uh, this whole thing you know allows us to do it. Indeed. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I look forward to that, Roger. Yeah. Take care. Take care. Bye. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.